We're hoping tonight that wherever you may be watching tonight on the program, you will get clarity and get perspective to what exactly is going on in Nigeria and the issue of security and this fund. So tonight, we're going to get different perspectives. First and foremost, we get the professional military perspective on this. So we have a retired military officer, Colonel Hassan Stanlabo, here with me in our Lagos studio, in our Abuja studio, from the dif different divide. We have Indicator, is the secretary on the PDP Generation Next, and also Ayobami Akonji, a security analyst, a member of the APC media team. Thank you so much for joining us on the program, my partner. Uh, let me begin tonight with um, what seems to have uh, been a criticism coming from the opposition party. So the big question, uh, Indy, will be why would the PDP be thinking that this money uh, perhaps uh, uh, will bring suspicion or the suspicion being raised by the PDP on such a very sensitive issue as security of the nation? It's... Is that... It's not, um, it's not just the PDP. You know, I have been able to talk with a lot of people, and people are very concerned each time the government does this. And let's keep in mind, you know, my party, the People's Democratic Party, is not here to play politics with issues of security with the nation. We want this nation to be secured. And President Muhammad Buhari, who is my president, you know, it is his job. The box st um, stops at his table, of course, for this. However, we're looking at the processes that were taken for this. And these processes were not straight. This needs to go through the National Assembly, did not go through the National Assembly. We're hearing that, well, it is not um, the nation's money, it belongs to the state. And Well, did it go to the governors? No, we've not seen any. If it, if it is to go to the governor, of course, the governors, we should have issues with um, state assemblies okaying this, but we really have none of this. There is no processes to this. It's straight up signing this, and I, I would dare say that it's a lawless move. And what we're not going to tolerate is lawlessness. So uh, the PDP came out to say that the National Assembly should commence action against the president, and they are saying that that money will be looted. So that's a very big suspicion coming from the uh, PDP in the first place. So the question would be, the party, uh, the, the government has said, we're using this money for security generally, not only on Boko Haram. And if you look at the legality of the issues surrounding the excess crude account, are you still saying that the federal government should not go ahead with this funding? Again, the federal government has the right to say, okay, they want to fund the fight against Boko Haram, but we cannot follow a lawless process for this. It's a democracy. There are processes to this. This is why we have the three tiers of government. So you can't just wake up on your own and decide that, look, this arm of government is going to do this by itself without involving the other parts of government. And that is exactly what we're trying to talk about. We cannot continue down the line of lawlessness, especially when we're talking of change. We cannot say that the president will just wake up and sign this on his own without going through the National Assembly. And if you say the money belongs to the states, then you haven't gone through the states, you haven't gone through the state assemblies, and you're just signing it. These are the issues, and we're sticking to it. We're not saying, again, that money shouldn't be taken for this. And there are also other issues involved. You've told us that these things have been defeated every now and then. With respect to Boko Haram, for example, the, the, the government keeps going on and on every other day with the fact that, oh, or with the alternative facts that Boko Haram has been technically defeated today, it has been de de decimated tomorrow, and then we wake up and then we hear one billion. Of course, the timing too. You can expect Nigerians to just take it sitting down. And then we do not have a breakdown of these um, numbers. We don't have what exactly it is going into. And when things are not this clear, Nigerians should ask questions. We again, I'll state that my party will not play politics with the security of people. That is why we do, we do not flay our arms every time there's an attack and try to beat down the government. But let us also check the processes. You cannot use the excuses of this, especially if your fight is not going as should be. You cannot use that as an excuse to just withdraw one billion. At this time, it's not just suspicious to the PDP. Let's look at the Nigerian people. Do the Nigerian people trust that this money is going to where it should be used for? I do not think so. I'm a Nigerian and I'm a citizen and I do not think that this money is, the, the, the reason behind this is completely altruistic. And I would ask questions. Uh, let me ask uh, uh, Mr. Ayobami Akonji, uh, 
it, it looks so much that perhaps the federal government had given room for a lot of suspicion. Uh, what other clarity could the government have given to make Nigerians believe that these monies are going to be used? It looks like deja vu to some people who believe that this kind of monies have been spent in the past and they were never uh, used uh, for the purposes for which they were supposed to be used for. Thank you very much, Shil. I think first of all, I'll start by saying fact, facts are very sacred. You see, there's been a procedure on how this $1 billion, which will be drawn from the ES, ECA, has been from since when the vice president, who chairs the neck, and the governors agreed. Nigerians were updated by the governors that they've given federal government the approval to spend $1 billion. And they've been able to get the approval of the State House of Assemblies. Now, the NEC is compri comprised of all 36 state governors, comprised of APC and PDP. They were all there. We didn't hear any. We didn't, nobody came out to discontinue, discontinue what the president said or what the vice president said. So now, one thing that is really very important here is the fact that security is not a matter of politics. You don't politicize security. We had challenges. We have challenges and we're fighting to see how we can restore peace and security in the country, which is the first constitutional right of every government in place. How can you secure Nigerians for them to live peacefully? before we can begin to discuss APC or PDP. Without peace, it can be space for politics. Now, we've been saying that uh, Boko Haram has been degraded. By that term, we mean they have no territory. In the past, they used to have lands where they can come in and from there attack and run back into, but they don't have that right now. And that's really very clear. All we're facing right now is asymmetric warfare, which is a global phenomenon. The target come, hit, and run away. And now we need to update our equipment. They're quite obsolete. We need to have new platforms. We need to get a new M135. We need to get a new armaments. We just created an intelligence fusion center, an epic center in Midugri. We need to arm this place there. We're fighting a modern warfare. So at this level, I expect people, at, the Nigerians at other divide, let's come together first of all. Let's have, let's have a unity of purpose. Let's have a consensus of purpose. All right. Let's restore peace, then we can play politics. But by the rules of engagement on this $1 billion, Taking from the ECA, the government is abiding by the rule of law. 